welcome to my YouTube channel. So this video is about introduction to information and communication technology. Upon completion of this video, you could be able to learn what is ICT, uses of ICT in our daily lives, at yung impact of ICT in the society. Umpisahan natin sa definition ng ICT. Ano nga ba yung tinatawag na ICT? Ang ibig sabihin ng ICT ay Information and Communication Technologies o yung tinatawag nating technology. Ang ICT ay isang infrastructure and components that enable the modern computing world. Ang term na ICT is generally accepted to mean na lahat ng devices natin, mga network components, application, yung mga naka-install sa cellphone natin, sa computer natin, system, Pag yung mga yan ay pinagsama-sama, yan yung tinatawag na ICT na kung saan inaalaw yung mga tao or mga organization, mga business to interact into digital world. The next definition ng ICT, ano nga ba si ICT? So, ang ICT stress the role of unified communication o yung pinagsama-samang body of communication and the integration of telecommunication. Yung telecommunication, yan yung tinatawag na mga telephone lines and wireless signals and computers, syempre. As well as necessary enterprise software o yung mga software natin na ginagamit natin and the middleware, also the, the storage and the audiovisual na ginagamit natin na kung saan inaalaw niya or ina-enable niya yung mga tao o yung mga users to assess or puntahan, gamitin i-store, mag-send or mag-transmit or magbigay to understand and manipulate also information. Doon pa lang sa networks na word, ma madedefine na natin na ang ICT is pinagbubuklod-buklod niya yung mga tao in terms of uh, kung pinagsasama-sama tayo sa digital world. So, through a signal ca cabling or mga link system. Merong mga malalaking economic incentives to merge telephone network with the computer network system. Gamit ang single unified system of cabling, signal distribution, and management. Ang ICT is an umbrella. So, isa siyang umbrella term that includes any communication devices. Mapa radio yan, television, cellphone, computer network, yung mga satellite system natin, at marami pang iba, and appliances din natin. With, with them kasi, such as video conferencing and distance learning. So, yan yung tinatawag na ICT. Ang ICT also includes analog technology. So, hindi lang yung mga digital technology, ang mga analog technology, such as pwede rin yung mga paper communications and other mode and transmit communication. So, yung radio, yan, mga analog technology natin yan. So, I, ICT also includes um, broad subject and the concepts are evolving always. So, ang ICT, hindi, hindi siya nag-stagnant. So, lagi yan nag update lagi yan nag -e evolve Another, it covers any product na kung saan kayang mag-store, mag-retrieve, mag-manipulate, mag-transmit or mag-receive ng information electronically in a digital form. Let's say, for example, yung personal computers natin, including smartphone natin, yung digital television natin, yung mga emails natin, or mga robots, ganyan. So, yan yung mga sample o yung um, pwede mong sabihin ICT. So, another definition of what is ICT, ang ICT, meron siyang mga components. So, ang components niya, with, let's start with the hardware, software, telecommunication, cloud computing, database and warehouse, and the human resources. So, yan yung components of ICT. So, start natin sa hardware. So, when we said hardware, it is the tangible part of ICT. Ibig sabihin ng tangible, natatouch natin, nahawakan natin. So, ang software is kabaligtaran ni hardware. Si software, intangible naman siya na part ng computer. So, ibig sabihin, nakikita lang natin or naririnig. So, hindi natin siya natatouch. So, let move muna tayo kay hardware. Balik tayo kay hardware. So, hardware, this is the physical technology that works with the information. Pwede nga ang hardware natin is small, kagaya ng smartphone natin na nagpipit siya sa bulsa natin or sa kamay natin, or mga malalaking computer or mga supercomputer na kung saan 
nakalagay sa isang buong building. Yan. And hardware also includes the peripheral mga na devices natin, um, such as yung keyboards natin, external disk drive, yung mga routers. Yan. With the rise of IoT, in which anything from home appliances to cars to clothes will receive and transmit data, sensors that interact with computer permit that the human environment. Kung mapapansin ninyo, naka-apply na. May mga devices na tayo naka-apply ang IoT. So, sabihin mo, closed door, magsasara yung pinto, open light, mag-open yung light. Or kaya sa mga cellphone natin, dati ang password natin, hindi na tayo gumagamit ng fingerprint ngayon. Pwede na tayong gumamit ng password sa cellphone natin gamit ang fingerprint. So, ang dami. Ang, gand ang bilis mag-evolve ng ICT. So, that is the hardware. Then, let's move to software. So, always remember that the hardware needs to know what to do. So, hindi magpa-function ang hardware ninyo kung hindi niya alam ang gagawin niya. So, para alam ng hardware ninyo kung anong gagawin niya, kailangan natin ng tinatawag na software. Si software ang magsasabi kung anong gagawin ng hardware natin. So, the, the, the software can be divided into two types. Meron tayong tinatawag na system software and the application software. So, the primary piece of system software is the operating system. Kagaya ng Windows, iOS, yan yung Android sa cellphone ninyo, which manage the hardware operation. Software na yun, o yung system, operating system na yun, siya yung mag-hold ng mga application software ninyo. Application software is designed for specific tasks, tasks such as handling a spreadsheet, creating document or designing a web or pag naglalaro kayo. Kaya kung papansinin ninyo sa, sa operating system, pag magda-download kayo ng mga application outside, ganyan. Ina-identify nyo pa ano bang, ano bang operating system mo? ba diba, ganun ang tinatanong. Kasi yung mga, yung mga application software, meron talaga silang dinesign kung saan sila operating system na dapat nag-run o ma-open. Then next, let's move to telecommunication. So, ang telecommunication, these components connect the hardware from a network. Mga devices natin gamit ang telecommunication na kaya niya makipag-connect sa ibang mga devices. So, connection can be using wires or mga Ethernet cable, fiber optics or wireless or Wi-Fi or kaya signal sa cellphone ninyo, yung data ninyo. So, that is a telecommunication. So, a network can be designed to tie together computer. So, pinag, pinag ginagawa niya ng communication ang mga devices natin in a specific area which is the digital world. So, such as, sabi niya dito, an office, an school, ganyan, kahit magkakalayo yung opisina, connected pa rin sila. So, let's say for example, to the use of telecommunication, kahit na sa ibang bansa yan, madali mo na lang silang ma-reach out. Madali mo silang makita, madali kang makipag-communicate sa kanila. If computers are more dispersed, sabi niya dito, then network is called a wide area network. So, kung, hindi lang siya, kung ang network ninyo hindi lang nasa loob ng isang building, kundi na nakakarating pa sa ibang lugar, ibang bansa, Wide area network na ang tawag doon. So, the internet itself can be considered a networks of networks. Next is yung tinatawag nating cloud computing. So, the term is generally used to describe data centers na available sa lahat ng mga user or many users over the internet. Ang large cloud, so predominant today yan. So, often have functions to distribute over multiple locations from central server. So, if the connection of the users is relatively close, it may be designate an edge server. Clouds may be limited to a single organization, pwede yun. So, that is tinatawag na enterprise cloud. So, be available to many organizations, yun yung tinatawag na public cloud. So, or a combination of both, yun yung tinatawag na hybrid cloud. So, the largest public cloud is yung Amazon AWS. So, when we said public cloud, yan yung term sa storage or sa mga servers natin sa internet. O, in short, yan yung mga data centers natin available sa internet. 
Next, we have database and data warehouse. So, ang database, yan yung term na kung saan dyan naglalagay ng mga data or information or dyan nagko-collect ng data or information in terms of digital world. So, and from which, sabi niya ka dito, through the use of database, we can retrieve by querying it using one or more specific criteria. So, ang data warehouse contains all of the data in whatever form that organization needs. Ang database and data warehouse have assumed even greater importance in information system with the emerge of the big data. So, a term for the truly massive amounts of data that can be collected and analyzed. So, in short, ang database, it is a storage of informations and data sa, sa digital world. And data warehousing is the collection of all database kung, na kung saan pwede natin magamit in decision making, mga ganyan, or in big data or in digging more information. Then last, we have the human resources. So the human resources, this is the final and possibly most important compo component of information system. Why? Sabi nga niya dito, in the human element. So the people that are needed to run system and the procedures they follow so that the knowledge in the huge database and data warehouse can turn into learning that can interpret what has up happen in the past and guide future action. So, when we said, kasi itong components of ICT, hindi pwedeng mawala ang human resources kasi hindi gagana yung mga yan kung walang tao. So, ang tao, siya yung nagko-control dyan at kailangan yung mga human resources na nasa components of ICT na legible sila doon. Kasi, through the use of them, di ba? So, napag-aaralan nila kung ano yung past at nakakapag bigay sila o nakakapag-convert sila ng solution for the future. So, another is sila din ang may knowledge sa mga huge database natin, how to manage the network. So, yan yung mga human resources. So, yan yung bumubuo sa components of ICT. So, next, let's move dito sa models of access to ICT. So, this is, um, meron tayong na-search na kung saan. This is a model of access framework para sa pag-analyze ng ICT acceptability. So, itong nakikita nyo dito sa side, we have the device, the literacy, and the conduct. So, the most straightforward model of access of ICT is given by this man, Churi, is devices. Sabi niya, in this model, sa mga devices natin, access is defined most simply as owning a device, such as phone or computer. So, hindi mo masasabing accessible ka sa ICT kung wala kang hawak na device. Diba? So, ang pinakaunang gawin mo is dapat magkaroon ka ng sarili mong device, either phone or computer. So, sabi niya dito, in-identify niya yung mga, si Mark, in-identify niya yung mga many flaws in, the, in this model. So, including its inability to account for additional cost of ownership such as software, access of tele telecommunication knowledge gap surrounding computer use, the role of government regulation in some countries. So, syempre, if you don't have money, hindi ka makakabili ng device mo. If wala kang masyadong o wala kang idea sa mga software, yan, o wala kang pambili ng mga software, so hindi mo rin ma-access yung ICT na kailangan mo. Access to telecommunication, wala kang signal o ano pa man. So, hindi mo rin magagawa o mapaperform yung, yung kabuuan ni ICT. So, hindi mo siya may enjoy And also, yung tinatawag na knowledge gap surrounding in terms of computer use. Kasi let's say, for example, walang knowledge, walang, walang magkukwento sa'yo, walang magtitit sa'yo, wala kang resources kung paano gamitin ang isang ICT, mahirap din yon So, therefore, sabi niya dito, Si Mark argues that considering only devices understates the magnitude of digital inequality. So, dun pa lang sa pag-own natin ng device, kailangan meron tayong pambili. Siyempre, kailangan meron o kaya mayroong magbibigay sa atin or meron tayong kakayahan na intindihin or aralin kung para saan ba yung technology na yung paano ginagamit. So, the few 
Research Center ni notes niya dito na 96% of Americans own a, a smartphone. Although most scholars in this field contend that complete access to ICT in the US is likely much lower than that. Then next, we have the conduit. So a conduit is requires a connection to supply line. So which for ICT could be a telephone line or internet line. So ibig sabihin ito yung kumbaga parang bridge natin between one devices to other devices. Then accessing the supply requires investment also in the proper infrastructure if isang company yan or isang organization yan or sa bahay din ninyo. Siyempre kailangan natin o kailangan ninyo ng requires investment for that. So or local government and recruiting payments from the user once the line is set up. So, pag nagpa-set up kayo ng internet line ninyo or telephone line ninyo, syempre, kailangan may payment yun sa service provider ninyo. So, for this reason, ang conduits usually divided people based on their geographic location. Kung mapapansin ninyo, mas maraming mga may internet connection sa mga nasa city. Diba? Yung mga nasa barrio o kaya nasa liblib na lugar, hindi ganun ka kalaki or kalawak ang may mga connections. So, there are some part pa ng Pilipinas na kung saan wala pang signals. And, sabi nga dito, a few research center poll reports din na sa Amerika, yung mga rural, rural area doon, 12% less likely to have a broadband access. So, parehas lang din natin sa, dito sa Pinas. So, thereby making them less likely to own a certain devices. So, syempre kung, kung hindi ka naman, hindi mo naman magagamit, hindi naman nila need sa lugar nila yung ganun, kaya mas kokonti lang yung merong ganun mga devices sa ICT. So, the cost can be prohibited to lower income families accessing ICT. Siyempre, mapapansin din natin kung sino yung mga lower income, sila yung hindi masyadong natatouch ng ICT. Kaya nagkakaroon, nagkakaroon ng division ng mga tao. So, these difficulties had led to a shift toward mobile technology. So, fewer people are purchasing broadband connection and instead, nagre-rely na lang sila sa smartphone for the internet access o yung gumagamit na lang sila ng data which can find for free in public places. So, which is true naman. So, like, um, Like now, uh, as the pandemic arises, may mga isudyante tayo na, 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 na cellphone ang mas prinayoridad na bilin. Kasi sa cellphone nila, pwede silang mag, mag-connect sa internet gamit ang phone nila. Or pag may mga public na wifi, pwede silang makakonek matik. Mas madali pa silang makapunta doon. Unlike pag computer ang binili, sabi nga dito sa study nila, 37 of Americans using smartphone are their primary medium. So, the same din sa mga isadyante. Majority of the student is cellphone lang ang meron sila. Then, le- next, let's move to literacy. So, ang literacy, ibig sabihin niyan, that is our ability to read and write and to understand also. What is written? Na base doon sa binasa natin. In, let's go back to year 1981. Na kung saan si Sylvia and Michael Cole or Cole studied a tribe in Liberia. Since about half of those literate in Vai have never had formal schooling, so ngayon yung dalawang yun, we're able to test 1,000 subject to measure yung mental capabilities or literacy ng mga non-literates. Over non-literates. So, pinagkumpara nila ang literates and over non-literates. So, yung research na yun, laid out in their books na tinatawag na Psychology of Literacy. So, in sila to study whether the literacy divide exists indiv- individually. So, computer and internet use brings no automatic benefit outside of its particular function. Ang ICT use is um, a social practice involving access to physical artifacts, content, skills, and social support. So, yun yung mga nagagawa, uh, yun yung mga pwede ninyo mapak- natin mapakinabangan if you have the literacy. And the acquisition of ICT access is a matter not only of education but also 
of power. So, ito yung tatlo na models or need to complete the models of access in ICT. The access to device, the access to conduits, and the access of literacy. So, next, we have here, the, ano ba yung mga palatandaanan, sabi niya, na may real access ka to, to ICT. So, sabi nga niya dito, devices and conduits are the most description to access the ICT. Pero, dun sa model kanina, naka dun si literacy. But, they are insufficient for meaningful access to ICT without a third access to literacy model. Kasi aanhin mo ang technology, anhin mo ang devices, aanhin mo ang network, anhin mo ang connection kung wala kang literacy. So, combined, pag pinagsama natin yung tatlo, yung literacy, the devices, and conduits, these three models roughly incorporate all 12 criteria. So, ito yung 12 criteria sa real access to ICT. So, this is um, conceptualized by, an, by a non-profit organization called na Bridge.org in 2005. So, una, we have the physical access to technology. Kailangan, meron yung device sa atin. And, pangalawa, appropriateness of technology. Kung yung isang technology, bumili ka, or, or nag-order ka, o binigyan ka, tapos hindi naman akma, sa organization ninyo o sa company ninyo, hindi nyo naman kailangan, wala din. Wala din magagawa yung technology. And affordability of the technology and the technology use. So, yan yung isa, yung cost ng technology. Another, dapat um, para may real access kayo sa technology, kaya nyong, kaya nyong mag o afford ninyo. And next, we have the human capacity and training. So, dapat... Yung mga tao nagagamit ng technology para masabi mong may real access sila sa technology or ICT, kailangan may knowledge sila sa ICT technology na yun. Na ipapakilala mo or malalaman nila or gagamitin nila. And the locally relevant content, application, and services. Yung kumbaga, yan yung mga relevant na mga data informations the services and applications to you as a human or sa company mo or sa organization with in locally so integration into daily routines so masasabi mong may real access ka of ICT if ini-integrate mo siya sa daily routines mo or kung mapapansin mo araw-araw may lagi mong kasama ang technology so you have a real access to ICT and also the socio cultural factors kung napansin mo na nakakaya mo makipag-communicate online or digitally kahit hindi ka na pumunta sa isang lugar or sa bahay niyo you have also the socio cultural factors na the trust in technology if you have trust in technology of using it, you have the real access to ICT. And the local economic environment, also, the macroeconomic environment, the le legal and regulatory framework, and also the political will and public support. So, yan yung mga need natin to have a real access to ICT. Next is the uses of ICT in our daily lives. So, this is the uses of the um, ICT in our daily lives or pang-araw-araw na buhay. We have the communication, the job opportunities, the education, and socializing. So, uses of ICT in our daily lives, start natin sa communication. So, alam naman natin na ang ICT take a major role for us by means of communicating. So, way back, nung nakaraan o nung mga nakaraang taon, mapapansin natin or ma magpakwento kayo sa mga parents nyo o sa lola ninyo na ang pagbibigay nila ng message is through the use of letters. So, yun, sinesend, uh, sinesend nila yun via post. Diba? Or physical talaga. Sinusulat nila sa papel yung letter nila tapos bibigay nila sa postal office. Tapos yung postal office, lahat ng mga i-collect nilang mga letter, ibibiyahin nila yun. So, physically. So, kaya ang letters, minsan nagtatagal ng isang buwan bago makarating sa'yo yung mensahe. Unlike ngayon, di ba? 
isang type mo lang, masasend na within a seconds or microseconds yung mga message ninyo. Hindi kagaya noon na pag gusto mo makita ang picture o itsura ng isang tao, ipapadala pa rin niya through the use of um, post mail. Yan. But now, with the help of ICT, it is easier to communicate sa mga tao or some especially to our loved ones. We can use cellular phone, yung mga smartphone natin, the design for commute, communicating with other people even though miles away sila sa atin. So nowadays, people are in touch with the help of the ICT. So through chatting, email, voicemail, social networking people, o kaya yung mga um, yung nagkakaroon kayo ng video conferencing, Yan. So, ICT is the cheapest means or pinakamurang communication ngayon. So, hindi ka gaya before. So, this is the cheapest means of communication. In, on how we use ICT in our daily lives in terms of communication, it is used to easier communicate to others, to adapt a global perspective toward issues and ideas. Kasi magkakaroon ka ng, bas, dahil sa mga komunikasyon, mas maraming mga taong nagsishare ng ideas. So, may easy access ka na na makapagbasa ng mga issues and ideas at makajoin. So, ma, um, meron ka na rin um, kakayahan to engage in ethical decision making. The cheapest means of communication helps a lot to build the relationship. You will also engage in ethical decision making and also provide the student remote access to expert teachers and learning resources. So, pwede silang mag, um, makahanap ng mga, mga expert na kung saan pwede silang tulungan or mabilis silang maaksyonan. Unlike before na kailangan mo pang puntahan yung teacher o yung tao. And designed for communicating with other people even they are miles away. So, next, let's move to another, which is the job opportunities. So, in the employment sector kasi, ICT enables organization to operate more efficiently. So, employing staff with ICT skills is a vital to the smooth running of a certain business. Kasi ngayon, majority of the businesses is may, IC, may integration na ng ICT. So, being able to use ICT system effectively allows employees to, to more time to concentrate on areas of their job role than requires the soft skills. So, let's say sabihin natin yung mga nasa pharmacy, gumagamit sila ng robot technology para ma-assist yung picking ng prescribed na drugs. So, yung mga ganong, mga ganong senaryo. So, this allows highly trained um, pharmacy staff to focus on job requiring human intelligence and interaction such as dispensing and checking medications. Diba? So, nowadays, employers expect their staff to have these skills or itong ICT skills. Kaya kung mag apply na kayo ng trabaho, it is important na meron kayong ICT skills Let, hindi lang dapat yung mga may kurso ng related sa ICT. So, all of the courses, dapat meron kayong idea what is ICT and how to and how to apply ICT. So, this expectation even applies to job roles where ICT skills may not have been an essential requirements in the past. So, dati kasi kapag uh, kapag ICT ang course mo, yun lang mga nag-aaral. Pero kung mapapansin ngayon, there are all all of the courses is may naka-integrate ng ICT subject. So then nowadays, if you are finding a job, you can just use your smartphone, yung laptop mo, yung desktop mo, or any gadgets. And aside from that, marami na ding online job. So, in terms of job opportunities, ang dami ng job opportunities. So, even you are working at home, so kaya mo magkaroon ng trabaho. Then we, um, so, in short, the use of ICT in our daily lives in terms of job opportunity, it enables organizations to operate more efficiently kung may mga system and employing staff with ICT skills it's a, is a vital to the smooth running of a certain business. The use of ICT system effectively allows employees more time to concentrate on areas of their job role that requires soft skills. And by the help of ICT, it can provide you an easy job that can easily do at home and to find job in the comfort of your home. Next, we have another in terms of education. 
So, information communication technology can impact student learning when teachers are digitally literate and understand how to integrate into curriculum. So, if a teacher is knowledgeable enough to digitally apply ICT to the classroom setup, malaking help yun. Use an ICT tools to communicate, create, disseminate, store, and manage information. In some contexts, the ICT also become integral to the teaching-learning interaction, kung mapapansin ninyo. So, through such um, approaches, like for example, gumagamit dati ng chalkboard, diba? ngayon gumagamit na ng digital board. Dati gumagamit lang ng, ng Manila paper, ganyan. Now, gumagamit na ng PowerPoint and through the use or help of the projector. So, using students on smartphone or other devices, kaya na din natin mag-share ng teacher at ng estudyante or magklase. So, meron na tayong, kung dati ang setup is the classroom setup itself. So, ngayon meron na tayong tinatawag na video conferencing. So, meron na tayong tinatawag din na flip classroom where student can watch lecture at home on the computer or sa TV nila or sa cellphone nila in their more convenient time. Yan. And yung time nila sa klase, ginagamit na lang para magsagot ng mga activity. So, kapag ang teacher ninyo ay digitally literate or kapag ikaw as teacher is digitally literate and tra trained to use ICT, so malaking help yan. So, these approaches can lead to higher order thinking skills, provide creative and individualized option to your student to express their understanding and to leave students better prepared to deal with ongoing technology change in society and workplace. So, as a teacher din, or if you are a teacher, maganda din na hindi tayo natatakot to dig or to try new technology. Kasi, let's say for example, we don't want to use Edmodo or Google Google Meet, Google Classroom, hindi rin natin masishare sa mga isadyante kung ano ba yung mga technology na yung. Is the use of ICT in our daily lives in terms of socializing? So, social media, alam naman natin na has changed the world already. The rapid and vast adoption of this technology is changing how we find partners, how we access information from the news. Diba? So, before through radio and TV lang, ngayon ang dami na, ang dami na nating resources to, to hear news, mas mabilis pa nga makarating ang balita sa sa mga social media. So, how we access information from the use, news and how we organize to demand political change. The internet and social media provide the young people or also the with a range of benefit and opportunities to empower themselves to a variety of way. So, kung makikita din natin ngayon, yung mga mas bata o yung mga habang bumabata o tumatagal So, pabata ng pabata ang nakiki-involve or natututo sa technology kung mapapansin natin at nai-involve na nila agad yung sarili nila sa technology. Or, let's say for example, yung mga 5 years old today, nai-express na nila agad yung sarili nila through the use of, sabihin nating TikTok or YouTube channel, meron na silang ganun. So, the, the communities and social interactions, young people from online can be invaluable for bolstering and developing young people's self-confidence and social skills. So, kung mapapansin natin, mas mataas na yung self-confidence sa mga younger generation. So, as ICT, sabi niya dito, is um, na pastor ng pag-increase niya or pag-evolve niya, accessible to ng technical community, social networking, and collaborative services, ay nag-grown rapidly. So, ine-enable niya yung mga tao to communicate and share interest in many more ways. So, through the use of social uh, socializing or ICT sa socializing, mabilis nating nahanap din yung mga taong na, kaparehas natin ng interest. Like face sa Facebook, let's say for example, ang hilig mo is to cook magsasearch ka lang ng mga Facebook group na, na kung saan nandun yung mga group of people na nagluluto or mga nagtatanim, 
or kaya mahilig sa ganitong plants, magani, mahilig sa ganitong sports. So, ma- mabilis mong mahanap yung mga person na may, may, sa, may kagaya mong interest na kung saan pwede nilang i-share yung mga thoughts nila or pwede ka nilang turuan or doon ka mat- mas matututo. So, we have the Facebook, the Twitter, the YouTube, the Pleaker. So, yun yung mga sample natin. So, mga, mga blogs, wikis, and many more in which let people of all ages na kayang i-access ang ICT rapidly share their interest of the movement without others everywhere. Then next, we have the challenge of ICT. Ano ba yung challenge para hindi natin ma-achieve yung ICT? Una is the expensive ICT material. So, syempre, pag mahal, hindi natin afford, hindi natin makukuha. Pangalawa is highly technical and practical driven. Pangalaw- pangatlo, under development. So, ibig sabihin, hindi pa tapos or kaila- eh, hindi pa nabibigay yung dapat kailangan natin for orientation about the concept. So, ibig sabihin yung knowledge natin related sa ICT technology na yan, hindi ganun kalawak. The intentions and also the acceptability ng mga tao. The next, the impact of ICT in society. Ito naman yung mga positive impacts ng ICT. Una, nagkaroon tayo ng access to information easily. And pati pag-share ng information, mabilis na lang. Improve access to education. So, nagkakaroon na tayo ng Google Meet, ng mga Google Classroom, yung mga, yung mga sample or the Edmodo itself, new tools, new opportunities, the communication, na improve yan, information management through those of mga databases or mga, mga data warehousing, yun yung mga sample, the security, to participate in a wider so, distance learning, ability to perform impossible experiment and creations of new more interesting job. So, dito sa may ability to perform impossible experiment, um, may mga simulation tool na kasi. Let's say, for example, yung paggawa ng, or pag-assemble ng isang machine. So, instead na gumamit ka ng totoong machine, na kung saan konting kamali mo lang, masisira na yung hardware at sobrang mahal, meron ng mga virtual na mga, mga simulator. So, yun yung isang sample doon. Then, next, let mo, let's move to the negative impact of ICT. Una is the job loss. Then, pangalawa yung reduced personal interaction. Pangatlo is the reduced physical activity. And the last is competition. So, bakit sa sinabing ma- uh, job loss? So, manual operations being replaced by automation. Kung mapapansin ninyo, ang robots le- replacing people on an assembly line. Kung mapapansin natin, dati yung mga, yung mga pabrika, mang, madaming mga taong nandun. So, dahil nagkaroon ng technology, maraming taong hindi na kailangan. So, data processing work being sent to other countries where operating costs are lower. So, multiple workers being replaced by, by a smaller number who are able to do the same amount of work. So, a worker on a supermarket checkout can serve more customer per hour in in a barcode scanner, like to a computerized steel. ba? Kung mapapansin natin yung mga yan. So, ka, gamit ang ICT, nare-replace yung mga trabaho ng tao. Another is reduce yung personal interaction. Kasi, ano na eh, nag, nagko-communicate na tayo ng, nagko-communicate na tayo digitally. So, mis- most people need some form of social interaction in their daily lives and if they do not get the chance to meet and talk to, to other or with other people, ang ginagawa na da, they may feel isolated and unhappy. So, they reduce personal interaction gamit ang ICT. Kaya may mga pamilya minsan na na magugulat na lang pag kakain sila or magkikita-kita sila, they are using cellphone. Hindi naman sila mag-usap-usap personally. So, na-reduce yung, na-reduce yung personal interaction natin. And also, na-reduce yung physical activity natin. Unlike before, kung yung mga bata before, kung, mapapa, um, kung babalikan din natin, mga physical activities ang nilalaro nila. And now, they are using cellphone, they are playing on their phone. So, yun yung isang example na kung saan naglilid siya sa health problem. Kagaya ng obesity, heart disease, diabetes. 
So, and another is the cost. So, a cost, a lot of ICT hardware and software ex is expensive. Yeah. Another is the cost. So, it is a, a sa negative impacts kasi nga, a lot of ICT hardware and software is expensive. Lalo na pag bagong labas yung ano, technology, sobrang mahal niyan. So, both to purchase and to maintain, in, in terms of maintenance din, mahal din, may mga software din na mahal. So, an ICT system usually requires specialist staff to run it. Diba? Let's say, for example, nag-integrate nag ng, ng system ang isang company, so kailangan mag, may tao pa siya na kailangan niyang bayaran para maging system specialist or magbantay or magmanage ng system na yon. So, another is the competition. So, this is usually true of as being a good thing. So, for but for some organization, being exposed to greater competition can be a problem. So, if the organization is competing for customer donations, for example, and other means of funding nationally or even internationally, they may lose out to other organizations that can offer the same ser service na mas mababa yung bayad. Thank you for watching to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and click on bell icon to get notification on my channel. Salamat po!